Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, Link Data, Link the Open Data Community of Practice Town Hall meeting. At this meeting, we will focus on some uh, issues and also talk about maybe some, what to look for in the future related to URI, URIs in Exlibris products and the services. And so hopefully in this 60, 60 minutes, we will have some uh, very good discussing, which will help the working group know what we can focus on or what we can recommend to Exlibris to either fix or to develop. So with this introduction, um, I'm going to turn to Laura and Greta, who are the two members worked on the linked data, um, who are members of linked, data, linked open data community of practice working group. So they are part of the subgroup who help to evaluating and examining existing um, URI features and the services provided by Exlibris. So now I'm gonna to turn to Laura. Okay, thank you, Shelley. Uh, so this is just a picture of the, of the agenda. I'll give an introduction. Uh, Greta is gonna take some time to um, walk you through what we consider our top issue. Then I'll come back with some other issues and observations and then questions. Um, and while uh, we're while I'm talking, while we're talking, um, I wanted just to show you some questions that we'd like to know from you to sort of get your juices going for for uh, the discussion. Um, there are two ways that you could enter questions for discussion, um, and one of them would be to use the chat. But we also have a Google Doc, and you can see the short URL for it uh, down below. That's LOD underscore TH underscore URIs underscore QA at bit.ly. Um, um, and I will uh, try to put this in the, can't do that. Whoops. Um, we can put that in the chat a little later. Um, well, you already put it in the chat, Laura. Great, thanks. Okay, so that's enough of that. Um, so this, these are the group members um, that um, uh, work together to um, observe um, uh, URIs. And when I say URI, we're aware that the standard is now called IRI, International uh, Resource Identifiers, um, W3C, um, but uh, we're used to calling them URIs and uh, most of the time they are ones that meet that standard um, and don't have uh, uh, special characteristics like non-Roman characters. So, um, so we're gonna call them URIs, what we're, we know. Um, I want to call out two members of our group. Everybody contributed, um, and uh, but I want to call out two members that had to leave. Uh, one is KT Lamb, uh, and um, he's no longer working for an ex Libris customer, so he had to leave at, after uh, contributing to the report. Um, and Nancy Falgren, and she, her job no longer deals with ex Libris products, so um, so we. We appreciated their contributions and wisdom um, and wish them well and are gonna miss them. Um, so why did this group um, give priority in, our, in this year's work to studying the URIs? Well, as, apart from the fact that it's a basic building block of linked data. And if you, if you link, work with linked data, any at all, you come to recognize that clarity about what a URI, which is really an identifier for something, not necessarily web address, clarify clarity about what it is that is identified is very important. If you don't get that right, um, your queries or your, your applications programs can make wrong assumptions. Um, and we had received some reports of some puzzling things. 
from customers. So we, our, our, our objective really is to uh, give some information to ex libris to make their products better. Um, uh, current, the current products that, um, that uh, ex libris is making available at Alma and primarily and Primo. Um, and also information that could be helpful to them in their development of new features such as a linked data editor. So we really want to make things as good as they can be. Um, these were the areas we investigated and we, we didn't do large scale um, overviews. We, we really looked at maybe a, a sampling of records. Um, the link data enrichment, um, addition of URIs and, and publishing of Alma records, et cetera. Bib frame conversion, uh, conversion to an RDA, RDF format, uh, JSON LD as embedded in uh, uh, the HTML um, of a single record view in Primo, simple link data. And I'll, I'll just show you a few examples of what these are as we come to them. Uh, and also point out there was a presentation about um, the linked data, open data theme um, on March 14th. And I have a link here for Alma roadmaps and themes. Um, there's the video for that is not available yet. Hopefully it will be soon, but there are uh, slides and helpful information there. And most of these features were demonstrated. So if you're interested, uh, you can find out more there. Um, so this linked data enrichment, I'm not showing a screenshot of the uh, linked data integration profile because I'm not a system administrator for our Alma. Um, so I couldn't get one, but um, it's fairly simple that you create an integration profile and make it and select linked data as the type. Uh, and there's maybe one more choice, which is very simple. Then uh, if, and that's not necessary for every single linked data feature, but uh, it's generally a good idea. Then you can create publishing profiles so that you can publish um, your records uh, with the enrichments. And that is addition primarily of URIs to, your, to an Alma mark record. And um, you can uh, see um, in, in Alma, once you have done this, you can take a look at the published um, uh, mark and see where the additions were made, such as the subfield zero here, okay, uh, by looking at other details and then the publication information. Uh, and, or you can, you know, look at your published records in any other way that's available to you. Bib frame conversion is fairly easy to see because there's a tab in the um, Alma record editor that shows what a bib frame conversion would look like. Um, and you can also um, set up a publishing profile. And again, I'm just showing a little bit of the selection that you have that you can se select just publish your records in bib frame rather than mark. Um, so we, we use the records from the Alma editor. Um, and now I'm gonna turn it over to Greta and she's going to give us uh, um, some information in the flavor of the issues that are coming out of use of subfield zero and one. Take it away, Greta. Laura, um, I'm going to talk about two issues about subfield zero and one that we found in linked data enhanced records in Alma. First, we noticed that after the Alma linked data enrichment of mark records, there are multiple URIs in subfield zero which could cause problems with bib frame conversion. The second issue is about subfield one. We'd like to suggest at Slippers um, consider to use subfield one for real world object URIs. While doing research about this topic, our working group found two programs of, uh, for cooperative cataloging PCC task groups had done plenty of works. 
There are PCC task group on linked data best practices and PCC task group on URI mark. We'd like to call your attention to their work. The linked data best practices final report is a good source to find the guidance of enhancing MARC BIP data with linked data URIs. The task group on URI CMARC has several MARC proposals that could help you understand the importance of having uh, subfield one. Well, before uh, we go into details about the issues we found, let's review the differences between subfield zero and subfield one first. What do they mean? And what are their differences? When to use subfield zero and when to use subfield one? We're going to help you review or answer those questions. So um, the subfield zero captures the control number of the authority record or standard number for individual fields. We, may, we might have seen subfield zero in many fields in MARC, such as 0, 24, 100, and 500. It may be in the form of text presented by a MARC organization code. It may also be a URI. Before 2017, um, there used to be a parenthetical prefix URI before the actual URI, but we're no longer doing that anymore. For example, in this field, um, the LC name authority link for the author Barbara Vine is in the subfield zero. This URI can take us to a record about the author Barbara Vine. It does not represent the author. It only means the LC name authority record about this author. Next, please. Thank you. Subfield one, on the other hand, can identify a name entity um, that is modeled as a, a real world object. It contains a URI. It can describe both the physical and intangible things. In the cataloging records or metadata, our RWO record usually has the identifiers from various sources, the type of thing it is, labels and definitions in multiple languages, and URIs for um, equivalent RWOs. Please. Oops. So, um, yeah, thank you, this, this slide. Both Wikidata and VF URIs can be used in subfield one. This image from a proposal written by PCC Task Group on URI mark. Sorry about the quality of this image, but it is um, it demonstrates when to use subfield zero and subfield one. We've seen some examples um, using VF URIs in both subfield zero and one. Some added a final forward slash at the end of VF URI, like this example in the red box. Um, this can dif differentiate the VF authority record URI from VF RWO URI. We will talk more about this in the later slide. Next, please. Uh, next, Laura is going back to the previous oh. slide. <laughs> oh, sorry. That next. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, why we want to differentiate subfield zero and subfield one and how to convert subfield one from MARC to RDF. Let's look at this 100 field for um, Michelle Obama. It has both LC name authority file link in subfield zero and VF link in subfield one. If we convert this field to RDF, we will have something similar to these two triples. Since the VF link is a RWO record, we can use it to represent the person. And the person is described by the LC name authority record in subfield zero. I hope this background information can help you review or understand those two subfields. Let's now look at the issues we found in the URIs enhanced by X libraries. Next, please. We found that there are multiple URIs in subfield zero, which can cause problems um, with frame conversion. After the Elma link data enrichment of MARC records, the URIs from different vocabularies are being applied to a single heading, even when the MARC source of the heading indicates it comes from a specific vocabulary. 
we have an example for a 650 subject heading. Next, please, Laura. Yeah, thank you. Here's the same uh, 650 fields um, in two different formats, Mark XML and BibFrame. We got the linked data enhanced Mark XML using Elma publishing profile with linked data enrichment box checked. In this example, the, sub the subject heading in Mark XML has two URI added by Xlibris. One is a fast URI, the other one is a mesh URI. However, when the second indicator of 650 value is two, we can only have mesh headings. So it is incorrect for Xlibris to add a fast URI here. The big frame record was copied from uh, BigFrame record view in Alma. It was converted from the enhanced mark record. Because there are two URIs in one 650 field, the BigFrame conversion merged the fast and mesh subject headings to one BigFrame subject element. This is not correct. Subjects from different source vocabularies should not be intermingled. Even if the label may be the same, the meaning behind the labels may be different. So when we use the current link data conversion tool to convert the mark with multiple subfield zero to formats like BigFrame, the conversion like the example we provided is likely to confuse the precise relationships between a heading, its source vocabulary, its code, um, and its identifier with the heading from other vocabularies. This problem is also likely to happen for mark to json LD conversion. We agree with the PCC task group on linked data best practices and would like to suggest Xlibris provide only one subfield zero containing a URI for each marked object. This should be the URI for the authority providing the preferred label. Next, please, Laura. Sorry. <laughs> The second issue is about subfield one. A subfield one with the RWO URI could be added to name responsibility fields like 100, 110, um, 111, as well as 700, 710, and 711, if there are not named title entries with the subfield T. The current Xlibris link data enrichment services um, in publishing profiles do not support adding subfield one. Our linked data working group discussed whether use of subfield one would be appropriate as a linked data enrichment and what context it would be appropriate in. We think that the library community is still involving as to the value of um, URIs in Mark for present use and for future conversion. So in this context, we would only suggest Xlibris considering to add VF RWO URIs to subfield one. While our group doesn't have further recommendations for enrichment with subfield one, we are open to community ideas. There are differences between names, subjects, and other related entities um, in MARC, and that assertion of boundness and equivalence need to be handled carefully in the linked data environment. So if you have any thoughts about this topic, please put it into the chat or our Google Doc. We can uh, talk about this after our presentation. Let's turn it back to Laura to hear more about the um, results we got. Thanks, Greta. Okay, so um, we have quite a number of other issues and observations. I'm gonna try to get through them quickly, but first, uh, since we're talking about other aspects of the features uh, Ex Libris provides, um, I'll give you a little um, information about, whoops. Um, Oh, okay. Um, that's that's coming up later. Um, these are these are ones um, that are similar um, and have their own impor importance. So, um, some of the subfield zeros that were being added um, to fields were not actually URIs. They were URLs that were like a query or an API lookup. For example, this uh, VIF is actually a lookup URI that's, um, that's uh, looking up um, uh, the um, name authority ID 
to get to request, is there a BIOF record related to this? Um, our suggestion is it's not that helpful to have a query URI. Um, uh, and sometimes they fail, but if Ex Libris can look up um, the VIAF record and retrieve uh, the URI, especially if it's for the real world object, then they could plug it in. So in this case, um, this URI is for the VIAF record, but um, what we are proposing is uh, to go a little further and retrieve the linked data there. And there is um, a way of getting the URI for the real world object. And that would be um, more valuable too because VIAF has extra data <coughs> that can be useful for developers uh, to get more linked data. So uh, next, okay. Uh oh, I am sorry. Uh, give me one moment to try and get that slide back, uh, and and hide all of my messy um, tabs. Uh... We're seeing the the train cat, um, slide right now. Yes, there it is. Okay, great. Um, so um, for subject headings. Um, which are a long string of subfields. Uh, we were seeing that your eyes that only match part of the string of subfields uh, are being added in subfield zero here. So um, uh, only subfield A is being covered and the other subfields are sort of cut off. And that um, associating a URI for an authority for only part of the heading really is not, uh, uh, could confuse things quite a bit. So um, our recommendation is if Ex Libris can do it, only add URIs if you are able to retrieve them for the entire heading. So we, we realize that this is a sort of a symptom of how the authority control works in Alma, but um, for generating URIs, we need, we need to uh, be exact about what we're talking about. And a part is not the same as the whole. Um, also, Leo is demonstrating here that things can be in a place where they're not supposed to be. And we have seen subfield zeros being added to fields where they are not a valid subfield in MARC. And particularly uh, where ISBNs uh, are being added. The 020 does not define um, a subfield for ISBN, for a subfield zero for ISBNs because um, the ISBN um, maintenance agencies are not providing URIs for ISBNs with linked data or anything else. This ISBN search.org. Um, uh, we're not sure why um, that is being added in the enrichments to Elman records. Um, there might be a good reason, but um, somehow or other, if, if there's a need for it, some other mechanism than adding an invalid uh, subfield, please, because um, <clears throat> that if you're publishing, say, bib frame or enriched, um, mark records to uh, another institution. <clears throat> um, we don't want to send mark that isn't valid. That does, that's not helpful. Okay. Um, more issues, um, the obsolete URI appearing before URIs already mentioned. Um, the faceted subject terminology or FAST uh, is not, we think, is not appropriate for adding to a name field like the 100, you know, um, main entry author person uh, because it's intended to be a subject vocabulary. Um, mark enrichment sometimes causes a duplicate URI to one that 
already appeared in the in the Alma record itself. And um, I think Ex Libris had already fixed that, um, but it appears that it's come unfixed. So we're reporting it. By F, look up your eyes are being added to topical subjects. We've already said we don't want query your eyes, but even query, e even if, if it were not query your eye, the reason the queries don't work is that VIAF does not um, uh, support subjects um, at this time. So we don't need those there. Um, now we'll come to some issues that while we think we would love it if Ex Libris wants to engage on these, we think it is really important to consider them in the future as future developments are coming along. Um, and again, I'm gonna show you uh, how you can uh, look, can find these uh, if you want to observe. Um, there's something I call simple linked data which is a, a very selective mapping out of mark using um, a Dublin core terms or the Bebo vocabulary. And here's how you can see it in um, an Alma search. Um, if you click on more actions from a particular item, uh, you can see a, a link that says linked data and that will show you what's there. And I picked a really short one so that you can also see that there is a link to a JSON LD version of this um, uh, um, at the end. And the, the context and the, the mappings for these are, are really hard coded. There's not any, anything much a, a customer can do um, uh, to get more mappings or more data or different vocabularies, but um, as, as we understand it. Um, but it can be affected by some of the problems mentioned, particularly the multiple subfield zeros. Okay, so and here is JSON LD in two different flavors. So one is this is the JSON LD output. It's it's a data format for containing. Uh, in um, on the left you have the simple linked data uh, from Alma. Um, expressed as JSON LD and um, developers may know uh, things that they can do with that. And on, on the right, uh, some JSON LD that is generated inside of the Primo record HTML, um, particularly um, um, uh, uh, more advanced if the site has used the uh, site map and search engine optimization feature in Primo. So I borrowed this, um, this particular snippet from uh, one of Harvard's records, Primo displays, um, just to show um, um, kind of what it looks like. And the fact that you know, if you go about one, two, three, four, five, six lines up, you can see the use of uh, same as here. This is actually schema.org vocabulary, which is different. And schema.org same as, which is different than OWL same as ontology working language, if you're familiar with that. And the kinds of assumptions that you can make out of the different kinds of same as are different. Um, and this is just a glimpse at an RDA RDF conversion. As you can see, it is it is very simple, not a, um, a complete conversion of a mark record uh, that has, as best we know, has not been provided from the library community yet. University of Washington is working on it. They are working on a mapping from Mark Twenty One to the RDA vocabularies, linked data vocabularies. So, but you can see that this is divided up into um, sections for work, expression, manifestation, 
And the manifestation has some item information at the bottom. So that's, um, that's those are the R RDA um, main entities uh, called WEMI. Um, and some of the problems um, that had to do with multiple URIs in subfield zero, et cetera, may, uh, may show up here as well. Um, finally, uh, in, in Primo, but not Primo VE as far as we can tell, uh, there, are, there are normalization rules to create a, a links URI section that would pass some URIs into the Primo PNX where they might be useful for developers. Uh, but when we, uh, I, I think uh, KT Lamb took a look at this. So this is his example. Um, and you can see that the way it is organized, it's kind of mixing up. It's not associating the URIs with the, um, with the descriptive elements that they go with in a way that looks like would be useful. So, um, and this is the APIs, um, just a link to where you can find APIs in general. Uh, the link data page has links to um, many kinds of uh, open APIs that will return linked data such as BibFrame, et cetera. And this example uh, will return, is from the documentation, will return a sample RDA, RDF record. Okay. So now I've already mentioned some of these issues. The primo normalization rule outputs, uh, not usable. Is that a useful approach? And should ex Libris maybe look into a better way to pass linked data into the PNX? Or, or is that not that useful, but something else might be more useful? So the developers among you could tell us. Uh, JSON LD simple link data is affected by other problems, and it it does use the simple data uses an owl same as, so you have to be very careful with owl same as, because if those two entities are not in fact the same thing, um, you've you've made a very bad sandwich. So, um, so the problems need to be straightened out, and then that maybe that data needs to have another look and see, is this, is this really useful or might this be more useful if customers could adjust the mappings and add more? RDA, RDF, um, maybe the same questions. Uh, is it useful and could it be more useful? Um, Certainly, if there were a full mapping uh, to the RDA vocabularies, that might be found useful, but, uh, but we don't have that yet. API calls using REST and SRU, SRW don't include the URI enrichments. So um, would it be useful if, they, if that was an option? So if you have URI enrichments turned on uh, for publishing or API access to BibFrame or linked data formats, why not make that part of other kind of API calls that are calling for the bibliographic information? Then finally, URI is created for conversion. And we had a lot of discussion about this, so it gets its own slide. And here's an example of um, a URI that's created because conversion to both BibFrame, RDA, RDF, or perhaps other linked data frameworks uh, require breaking mark data into different kinds of conceptual entities like work or instance for the BibFrame example. And Ex Libris is, is creating these URIs now it's doing it on the fly. Uh, I, I, as far as I know, these are not stored anywhere, but they are generated based on ALMA records, ALMA record identifiers. And the, um, 
the domain is an ex libris domain and the institution ID is the institution's ID with ex libris, et cetera. So what happens if, um, say, uh, the, and the MMS ID is on the end. So for Alma users, what happens if you delete a record and then you replace it uh, and the MMS ID has changed? Or what happens if your institution ID changes because of some change that you've made in, um, to your in particular installation? Or Ex Libris decides to change the domain name because you've, uh, you know, you've moved, you know, they've moved somewhere. Are these URIs really going to be, uh, we think they, they'd probably be unique, but unique, persistent, and dereferenceable are the qualities we, we need in URIs, stability. Um, and that dereferenceable part means if you plug that into uh, a program that's harvesting linked data or a browser, you will get something back. Um, this particular one, I think, will give you uh, some bib frame data, but the, uh, some of the others will not. I think the work level will not. So the, our questions for you, well, should Ex Libris be minting more persistent, dereferenceable, stable identifiers that are actually owned or under a domain name of the customer? Uh, is that important or not? Should it, it do more? Should it provide reconciliation? Uh, maybe same as relationships between entities that are local and those that might be maintained by national agencies like OCLC and dereferencing services, providing linked data associated with those entity identifiers, those URIs, should this be a customer community shared resource or something that individual customers would want? And we don't have answers there. Uh, these are just some sort of ideas to think about. These are some best practice documents that um, we found most useful. Uh, so if you want to go back to the slides and um, Read, on, read up on some of these, they're helpful. Um, and um, that's the end of the presentation part. Um, so we'll leave that up for information. Um, and Shelly, um, are we ready for question and answer? Yes, thank you, Laura. And thank you, Greta, for um, the hard work as well as the uh, sub sub team has done a lot of research and uh, did a great job on evaluating and also finding the example which we can really make it easier for for you to understand the issues when we talk about it so i think the um one of thing i i know uh itai who uh, is the ama used to be AMA product manager is also in audience. And um, he would like to have a few minutes sort of maybe going through a couple of things. He can just uh, give us some thoughts. So Yitai, um, if you would, would you like to unmute yourself? Sure. So, so first, I really, really appreciate all the hard work and the examples. I think you did a great job. And uh, I must say that most of the what you indicate here is the issues I'm working on and I'm familiar with. Some are more easy to handle. Some required more uh, in-depth, uh, uh, you know, consideration. And, and some are really something that we really need to discuss together. And that's mostly the persistence of URI, which is a very important. Uh, and I think uh, um, uh, it it makes the thing very practical. So I want to start with a few things, some general things. So Shirley, you mentioned that I I'm, um, uh, was a former product manager of Alma, which is correct. Uh, uh, there were some changes, organization changes uh, in, in uh, Ex Libris and especially uh, our business unit uh, uh, 
library solution. Um, but actually the link open data responsibility, uh, it stays with me. And I'll spend a little bit more about my role because I think it's highly relevant uh, uh, to this group to understand how we view it. Uh, so my new role is a, a cross product, uh, product uh, management manager. And my group, this new, a new group that wasn't before is actually working on all uh, relevant areas that are cross all solution. And one of these area is the link open data. So actually I'm working and continue to invest time and effort to promote link open data, both in Alma, but in other areas. And we're working together uh, and to do it that, including uh, uh, in the, the platform level in reaching. So that's, I think, uh, uh, good news uh, to the group. Uh, and uh, actually I'm, I'm recruiting a product owner that will uh, uh, be focused on link open data. So uh, as soon as uh, uh, I'll be able, you know, once we will decide who is the person, I'll introduce him and uh, I'm sure him or her, of course, and, uh, and, and I'm sure uh, that's something uh, uh, will be very helpful. Uh, I want to start with saying that I think we need a little bit history. Uh, and, uh, and I think that the beginning of these feature you, you mentioned here, both the uh, uh, and dollar zero subfields uh, and the enrichment and so on, it came from the uh, uh, thought of let's provide and enrich uh, as much as possible uh, the link uh, open data with existing capabilities and what we have. And I think that was the approach. It was approach at work and it was correct uh, uh, for that time. We perfectly understand. And I can say to you, that's something I can tell you uh, for sure, uh, that we will add the support for dollar one. It's something that we will do. I don't have yet a time I, I can commit, but it's something I'm working on creating the plan and uh, we are going to uh, uh, do it. And as soon as we'll have a firm uh, um, date, I'll share it with the group and uh, I'll be happy to work together. It's clearly that, you know, uh, 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 there's an important distinguish between them. We do support that in uh, Alma Refine uh, cloud apps that enrich the data. Uh, just a, a small mention, which I think it's important. Uh, Alma Refined Cloud Apps is now working uh, with the metadata editor directly, something that we improved. So I think it's good news because now manually you can add URI using uh, uh, this. And we are uh, working maybe on expansion of more vocabulary, in open uh, uh, data vocabulary uh, in the Alma Refined. Uh, I, I'm familiar with the uh, prefix uh, URI issue. It was a fixed and then it find out there are some implication on Primo that we are still sorting out. So we, we will handle it eventually. We just need to sort out the, the problem that was found uh, and the impact. I think it's because there was some assumption that this your prefix exists and to so, some degree was used in the normalization rules in Primo, so it's something we need to sort out and, and solve it. And here, I think it's uh, uh, maybe it's a good uh, opportunity to, to say, and that's something we're going to present in Iluna as well. It's a, it's a, a new collaboration between Alma and Primo that I'm uh, uh, working with Neely, uh, the product manager of Primo, uh, to create uh, better support uh, and uh, out of the box enrichment of uh, info cards in the discovery. And that's something we are upfront working to uh, uh, use correctly dollar $1, uh, uh, to use uh, correctly uh, the right uh, source. As you mentioned, we are probably will start with Wikidata and that's the intention. To, so that's something uh, uh, we are drilling into the details right now and be happy to share with you and work with you. Uh, and that's something. Uh, and that's something I think it's uh, also good news, uh, because we we aiming that at the end of the year we'll have end to end both cataloging usage by Synopia, uh, storing the information and the graphs in both insta uh, work level and instance level in Alma, 
ending by uh, showing uh, info card in discovery uh, based on the uh, wiki data. So that's, you know, a few things. There's much, a lot of details. And I see a mention here for Orchid ID. Yes, I've done some research around it and I've find out uh, also exactly what you mentioned and the, the fact that the ID itself sits in dollar uh, uh, zero and the URI should sit in dollar one. And uh, so, so that's uh, 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 clearly something uh, we've encountered and we are looking. Actually, uh, uh, we're working with the National uh, Agricultural Library on that area, on the ORCID. Yeah, so that's something I get that. So uh, again, I think it's, this is very important. Uh, and uh, I would like to just say that uh, I would like to update you uh, more frequently of how we're progressing with solving this issue. Uh, 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 and I think that for the URI generation, it's something we need like a separate track. We need to kind of focus uh, because that's in a whole different level. It's something like uh, we need to think what is the correct architecture, what is the correct ecosystem to provide it. I, I, Laura, you brought out the use cases which I understand, you know, yes, our institution ID are changing sometimes, rarely, but still. And to make sure that persistent is kept, we need to think. We do think about what you called maybe a community of cataloging, which is actually a group of institution cataloging together, working with a, a shared pool of link open data. So that's something we still, we're still in discussion and we still think about this vision. It's highly correlated with the fact of where you generate the URI, how you hold it, how you manage it, how you keep it persistent. And they're all kind of thoughts, other thoughts of using a system or similar system or ways. And I think that's maybe the whole community of, of librarians should, should think about it, uh, of uh, this kind of generating ID and giving the ability to have a proxy to those IDs and, and, and do some, as you mentioned, also re reconciliation around it. So I'll stop here because maybe there are more questions, more uh, feedback, and, and I'll be happy to hear them. Thank you, Itai, for um, some additional information. Um, so one thing I know you're going to have a um, fuller public program on May 11th. That is when um, the part of Iluna, uh, Iluna meeting. So. For those of you who want to hear more about the linked data roadmap from Ex Libris directly, probably ETA is one of the presenters. Uh, please consider to register for May 11th event. Um, I think the event will take place from uh, 1 to 4 East Standard Time. Okay, so with that, I think we have one question posted um, at the very beginning regarding the profile, AMA link data enrichment profile. So I think we posted, we added that question to our Google Doc and I noticed a greater or someone already responded. So let me read the question. Question is, the publishing profile publishes URIs to AMA or to Primo discovery layer or both? So Greta, would you like to answer that question? Sure, uh, Laura, if you want to say something, uh, go ahead. Uh, I can start. Okay. Okay. Um, it, uh, the publishing profile in the, um, the linked data enrichment in publishing profile only enhances the records you selected to export. Um, it does not change the records in Alma, Primo, or Discovery Layer. Laura, you are muted. was saying exactly um, <clears throat> right uh, so we didn't mention it we we alma refine's been mentioned so that would be a method sort of at a more granular level to add um uh things like subfield zero and one two Alma records, but um, but the 
a sort of wholesale enrichment that we've been having doesn't change the ALMA records. It only adds to them on the way out. So I guess a general question would be, would that still be useful? Perhaps in, in what kind of situations? Um, perhaps there are, there are contexts in which you want to enrich your records for sharing with other institutions that are doing similar things. Um, or, or for di your discovery application, but you're not sure about wanting to make it permanent. Okay, I think that question was, um, is there any follow-up question on the question just asked? Uh, there is a comment from Beth, that seems problematic if you can see the URIs right before you publish. Ah, okay. And I think Ruth also um, provided uh, another um, a, a tool that LC created for the big frame conversion um, that seems to fix the subject heading. Oh, yeah. um, Usually we point it out. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have something to add for the. It, it was more of a question. I'm not maybe I'm not understanding the enrichment as published because uh, it doesn't make sense to me if you can't verify and all you, that you're and you're finding all these errors with the enrichment. Um, so. Oh. Can I, can I say something to that? Yeah. Uh, one of the things that didn't make it into the presentation, but that we, if we, if and when we compile this report and publish it, which I think we're still talking about doing, maybe with input from Ex Libris, um, uh, that, um, that we can uh, ask for better documentation of exactly which fields are being mapped. Um, and um, to which um, uh, vocabulary URI sources. Okay, I think there's a list of sources, but there's not necessarily the actual mapping. And uh, other than that, you would just have to tr trust that it's doing what it's saying. But right now we don't have the details of what it's doing, so. <clears throat> Um, but yeah. So I think the one, one question best asked is where they can see the slides and that was um, posted, the, the tiny URL was posted and the slides is in our open folder, which we will send it out after today's. But if you want to see it, um, I think Laura, you also post into the chat, right? If you want to I post posted it, it into the chat. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, uh, and uh, kind of early on. So it, it's in there. I yeah. Can post it again if I can find it. See. Okay, so then there's the comments about have the facts. Fast and the mesh are all <clears throat> mingled, and that is one of recommendation we uh, were put into report is they should have their own different subject. Um, depends on second indicator uh, should come from the right source, not not put different source of vocabulary into same mark field. Um, so then. We don't have a further question, but we did have some prepared, pre-prepared question. If you want to either respond uh, verbally, or if you want to just go to our Google Doc and um, look to those questions and then offer your sort of thoughts, that would be very helpful for us to 
prepare our final report. Uh, let's see. Do we got any response from there? I, I think those links too are in that final slide if I can find it. Oh, okay. I, it, stopped, it stopped me sharing either that or you did. I did. <laughs> okay. It, yeah, we shared enough. Um, I can't find it now. Okay, that's okay. I will read a question to see if anyone has some uh, uh, immediate reaction. Um, do you have any questions on what we presented? Apparently, probably not. If you did, you may have posted, but um, second question we prepared for you to think about is, are there other problems we have not mentioned by Either you, you used it, you noticed, but we haven't presented it because as Laura mentioned at the very beginning, our subgroup um, looked at a different output and look at the different services, but um, we like to know if there's any particular area we have not examined and you like us to look into it. Laura, you, are you trying to show those questions? I was, I was trying, but it, um, okay. it's working for me, maybe for you. Okay, I will do it. Okay, here's the questions posted. Oh, sorry, if I moved my cursor. Okay, um, so we talked, I asked the second one, is any other problems you experience we have not mentioned? If you do, and after meeting, please go to our Google Doc and add it to the area. So we will make sure we will look into it. Um, third question is, are there other standards and the best practices that we should know about? So at the end of the presentation, uh, Laura listed uh, some of best practice document we used for doing this research. Um, primarily come from uh, two sources, if I remember, Laura. One is uh, definitely PCC's documentation and reports, as well as W3C, uh, best practice for link, linked data. So if you know other best practice we should uh, um, use, uh, please add, your, um, add that information for us. As, Third, fourth one, I think this one is very important. Is any of the recommended solution we presented today will cause the problem for your library. So for example, we talked about certain things and the slides, if those re recommended as a solution to Exlibris, would they cause the problem for your library, which we are not aware? So that type of feedback will be very useful as well. Uh, looks like our time is almost up. And then what issues are most important to you? Again, I think one of the things is we, we, we know Exlibris may not have resource and the time to uh, take all the recommendation. If we can put into some type of prioritization prioritizing those recommendations that probably will be helpful. So if there's any particular issues you think is very important to your library, would like to ask to make it a higher priority, uh, we would like to hear your um, feedback on that, your input. The last question is, what features linked data development in Exclusive product are most important to have? Uh, so this is a future discussing. I think uh, Laura presented towards the end of the meeting. So those are the questions we know you probably don't have time to think now, but after meeting, if you have time to think about it or talk to your colleague and provide your feedback, comments, or input, that would be very, very helpful and we would uh, greatly appreciate it as we are the working group for community. So we do like to hear from you and we like to present your needs, your concern and um, in the best way we, we, we could. 
So with that, I want to thank to everybody for taking time joining us today. And I also want to thank Itai to provide additional information. And also, if you want to hear more about linked data um, from Xlibris, please remember sign up May 11 um, program. Thanks to Laura and Greta for great presentation and also thank to other uh, sub team who has worked on this issue for past uh, six or even seven months already. So this is a really great work. Thank you everybody. Hopefully to see you next time. We do want to have a regular town hall meeting and bring different topic to your attention and also get your feedback. So with that, have a great day. Bye-bye. Let me stop recording.